Welcome to Selectory, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the 10 best comedy movies on Netflix. It's hard to pinpoint what makes something funny. Comedy is subjective and every person has their own sense of humor. What's funny to one person might not be funny to someone else. That said, we sought out and handpicked the 10 best comedy movies on Netflix for you. Here are some of the best comedies that we think might resonate with you. Number 10, The Half of It. Young adult movies often rely on the same well-worn tropes to tell their stories. But Alice Wu's new film, The Half of It, transcends these limitations and delivers a refreshingly original take on the genre. Through nuanced storytelling and a fresh perspective on issues of race and queerness, this movie treats teens with the respect they deserve. Wu Sierno is Ellie Chu, a bookish teen who must deal with the casual racism of her small town, while meeting the expectations of the teenagers she writes essays for. Her way with words makes her the ideal choice to ghostwrite letters for Paul. He needs to win over the girl of his dreams, Aster, but he's not very good at expressing himself. Ellie jumps at the chance to help by doing some literary drag. The half of it is a well-directed, layered film. One theme that Wu explores is the cost of assimilation, which has been a cliched subject in many teen movies before. But she goes deeper, looking at the loneliness of a girl who is an outsider, and how she wants to fit in. With tenderness, humor, and beauty, Wu comprehends what it feels like to want something but not be able to have it. Number 9, About Time. Richard Curtis's film is a delightful, fantastical romance that is impossible to criticize. The joyous cast of this romantic comedy will surely leave you with a smile on your face. Every character in the film is just like you remember. The cast is full of upper-class folk, wacky vulnerable kids, and characters that go into strange Curtis speak when they're under pressure. The lead actor, Donald Gleason, sounds exactly like Hugh Grant, making us suspect he was dubbed. But there are some funny gags and clever narrative turns in Curtis's well-crafted screenplay. Buoyed by his eccentric, well-off parents, Tim leaves the nest at 21 to pursue his dream of becoming a barrister in London. Tim's shy demeanor is quickly hassled by the busy city life until he meets Mary, who is unlike anyone he's ever met. Despite her lack of outward beauty, it's hard not to notice what a babe she is. Curtis is a director who loves his spoonful of sugar. He also won't shy away from using Arvo Parts music to add a touch of sweetness to the film, and make sure we're aware of the more emotional moments. You'll need a sweet tooth for this movie, but it's sincere and endearing with a fragile sort of sincerity. Number 8, Chef. The film's humorous and heartwarming tone keeps the audience stimulated, and what better way to do that than with delicious food? All throughout the movie, we see elaborate dishes being prepared and served. It's a great reminder that food isn't just about sustenance, it's about life and happiness as well. Mr. Favreau's character, Carl Casper, a Los Angeles chef with an intense love for food and cooking, never loses enthusiasm for his trade despite the fact that a snooty critic derails his career. With a lot of heart and not too much mind, we follow Carl as he falls and rises to pursue his happiness and fulfillment. He operates a food truck that makes Cuban sandwiches, and it's better than what he used to serve. The movie unenthusiastically tells us that these sandwiches are far tastier and healthier than the expensive, elaborately arranged dishes he created in his heyday. Chef offers a unique perspective on the importance of food, and how it can bring people together. Low-budget, homemade meals are the focus, which is particularly relevant for a country that celebrates diversity. When Carl finally loses his job at a prestigious restaurant, he realizes he has more to offer by cooking the food he believes in. Number 7, Dolomite is my name. Rudy Ray Moore is a legend in the world of black exploitation and black comedy. His life and career was just as intriguing as his persona, Dolomite. Although he was well known for his comedy and stage routines, Moore's fame grew when he turned his talent into filmmaking. His movies were outlandish and controversial, but there was nothing like them at the time. After years of not making it as a musician, Moore tried his hand at performing at a record store. But success had eluded him. That is, until he transformed into Dolomite. His popularity soared, and he soon became more famous than he could have ever dreamed of in his wildest dreams. It's no surprise that Murphy takes on the role, the luster of his own stardom has faded in recent years, but he remains the same person on screen. He dishes out expletive-laced insults, and remains steadfast in the face of adversity. In the movie, you'll explore what comedy really is, and why it can be so different from culture to culture. The film will explore the challenges that black entertainers faced in Hollywood in particular and it will also show a great Eddie Murphy performance. Number 6, Lady Bird. 
In her writings, the French philosopher Simone Weil wrote often about attention as a spiritual discipline. Attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity, she wrote in her notebooks, a notion she would later explore more fully. During a post-screening Q&A for her excellent directorial debut Ladybird, Greta Gerwig quoted Weil, and it's clear from the film that the spirit of faith, love, generosity, and attention animates the whole effort. Lady Bird is a coming-of-age film starring Saoirse Ronan as Christine, or Lady Bird, as she's rechristened herself. It's as humorous as it is smart and yearning, just like its heroine. In Lady Bird, director Greta Gerwig pays deep attention to her hometown of Sacramento and girlhood. The film is love for both her city and the feeling of being on the outside, because life always seems to happen somewhere else. Lady Bird is that rare movie that is not just entertaining or witty or confident, but all of those things at once. It's a movie that's been met with nothing but acclaim from critics and viewers alike. You'll love it. Number 5, Silver Linings Playbook. Pat was recently released from a mental hospital and is under a restraining order from his wife. He's determined to change his life for the better and prove himself. His motto is Excelsior. Pat's determined state of mind has us puzzled. What stage of bipolar disorder would you think he's in? Pat's top priority is rebuilding his relationship with his wife after they split. He beat up her new boyfriend, but that was in the past. He talks to his parents and assures them that everything will be fine. However, they're not convinced. One of the charms of the movie Silver Linings Playbook, by David O. Russell, is that Dolores is sane and caring for her husband, who's a fanatical fan of the Philadelphia Eagles. She has experience in dealing with compulsive behavior because her spouse has a history of being so. Even though it's not the first time you've seen this story, it's still pretty darn good. The actors are phenomenal, the dialogue is sharp, and the script is well written. The movie will have you laughing, crying, and shouting yes by the end. Number 4, The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Netflix's The Mitchells vs. The Machines could be your next favorite movie. Like an 80s family road comedy mixed with the visions of a tech apocalypse, seen in films like The Terminator, it's nostalgic, fun, and told in a modern style. This is a pleasant surprise for families who are looking for something new this season. Threaded with clever commentary on our reliance on technology, it features some incredible design work that will make you think about how we interact with modern-day society. It's one of the more enjoyable Netflix animated films in recent memory. Written by Michael Rianda and Jeff Rowe, who both worked on the beloved series Gravity Falls, The Mitchells vs. The Machines has what you need for a laugh. Not only are the characters really eccentric but they have a script that's so bonkers, so fast-paced, with elaborate, wild visuals to match. The film seamlessly combines pristine digital animation, with live-action images, and 2D drawings. With Katie as both our narrator and director, she interjects her thoughts and notes as she tells the story, making it an even more special experience. The film has a clear and well-formed identity, that is full of laughs and witty references to films we all love. Number 3, Hunt for the Wilder People. The movie Hunt for the Wilder People shouldn't work. It's a difficult subject to talk about without sounding cliche or sentimental. In this coming-of-age tale, a troubled teenager finds his place in the world deep in the mountains, with a man who never thought he'd be a father figure. And yet Waititi's film is a refreshing take on a tried-and-true genre. It's grounded in three-dimensional, well-developed characters, and has witty dialogue that is both compassionate and inventive. In fact, it's proof that we'll keep listening to the familiar stories if they're this well told. The Wilder People look like an easy film to make. But once you take into account all of the potential flaws, it's truly impressive. Considering how many minor beats produce laughs and major moments produce emotional pleasure, this film deserves the recognition it deserves. There's a beautiful moment halfway through this movie, when Heck and Ricky are high enough in the mountains that they can almost touch the sky. Heck calls it majestic. It's a word we don't use often, but we know what it means. The meaning of this movie is what really matters. It's a downright majestic film. Number 2, Bo Burnham, Inside. Bo Burnham is a comedian, musician, and film director known for his musical comedy. His new special, Inside, invokes and plays with many forms. As with most of Burnham's work, it's a musical production, full of songs about everything from sexting and internet culture to Jeff Bezos. Follow the adventures of one one-man show, filmed entirely inside a small room. Inside follows the host as he recreates digital forms like an Instagram grid or a Twitch stream, experimenting with lighting and camera angles. The movie is an experiment in cinema, that builds upon the style of filmmaking that launched Burnham's career. In a world of endless connectivity, loneliness can be a part of everyday life. 
It's an issue that vloggers face every day. Sometimes the cameras are recording a concert or a show, but other times it's a more intimate setting. The videos may take a confessional turn, revealing the daily struggles of a vlogger living in our digital age. Shot over a year-long period, Burnham's hair and beard grow longer and more unkempt. This makes inside a little like a captain's log. Except instead of a solo voyage through the high seas, Burnham is on a voyage through his own pandemic anguish. The movie is mesmerizing throughout. It's catchy, astonishing, captivating, and self-absorbed, all at the same time. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 1, Monty Python and the Holy Grail Monty Python and the Holy Grail is an instant classic for many reasons, but it's mainly because of its comedy. Released in 1975, this film has made all types of people laugh for generations, with funny jokes and satire that would make even the most serious of people chuckle. This is a parody of King Arthur's legend, performed by Monty Python. It finds the king and his servant Patsy, searching for knights to join him at the round table. The knights are then sent on a quest to bring back the sacred holy grail. Along the way, they encounter a cast of wacky characters with zany dialogue. The story does drag at times, but is made up for with more hilarious jokes and skits. Although the film had mixed reviews upon its release, it has gained higher recognition over the years, and is now considered one of the greatest comedies of all time. It even inspired a successful Broadway musical called Spamalot, and is still enjoyable by countless individuals to this day. This is a must-see film for all ages. If you're looking for a movie that will give you as many laughs as possible, Monty Python and the Holy Grail is the perfect film for you. Be sure to check out this video here on Selectory, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.